Rarely has a clump of mud looked quite so appealing. Who knows where it came from? Some of the three dozen states that drain into the Mississippi River system. But from the air, you see a paradise built on little grains of sand and dirt. Behold, the Wax Lake Delta. Mike, this is incredible. I mean, wonderful place. <laughs> Wildlife and fisheries biologist Mike Carlis shows us where land meets sea. In this case, where it pushes sea farther to the south. Right, overall, you look at coastal Louisiana, it's a, it's a bad story. And it, it's, um, it's quite depressing when you're dealing with, with the resources that utilize these wetlands. But you come out here and it's, it's the exact opposite. Our story begins in 1941. The Army Corps of Engineers, looking for a way to spare Morgan City future catastrophic flooding, cuts a new pass from the Atchafalaya, a straight shot to the Gulf, to siphon 30% of the river's flow. On the surface, not much happened at first. So the flood of 73 happens. There's a giant plug of mud, exactly. silt and mud that comes down, and suddenly land new delta land begins to pop and, and new delta forms here is what the wax lake delta looked like in 1941 here it is today 30,000 acres of new louisiana the boundary kind of indicates what the historic shoreline used to be it's happened mostly during the lifetime of 31 year old cassidy lejeune oh i think it's uh, definitely a, a the bright spot on the coast. There's, there's really nothing else like it. I'm standing in what should be the middle of a Chafalaya Bay at high tide in roughly one foot of water. Channels that are hard to get through currently that maybe five years ago you could run a boat through. The mudflats are impressive, but what blows you away are the brand new forest a couple miles to the north. We walk on an island that did not exist in the 1970s where willow trees tower above us. And I think most people probably would have said, you know, we might be able to do some kind of marsh creation out of this, but probably had no idea of what, you know, the magnitude of that. And that nature would And the nature, over. right. You know, you build it and they'll come, especially if you do it naturally. <laughs> The Corps regularly dredges the Atchafalaya and Mississippi and picks spots for man-made islands. In the Wax Lake Delta, nature calls the shots. At the Gulf, mudflats turn to lily pads, then to marsh grass. Sandbars morph into islands. We can duplicate in restoration somewhat, but we can't do what, uh, what nature creates itself. Nature, left to its own devices, weaves together its own masterpiece. You know, we saw the trees down there that have grown up in 20 and 30 years. Um, how long before there are trees here? It, it depends, but very, you can see we're becoming an emergent marsh here on this flat, and it could be a very short time. Within five years or so, you'll get little seedlings of willow trees popping up, and uh, in, in 10 years, you could have a little, a little forested island. Mike Carlos believes Wax Lake has powerful implications for other parts of the coast. This is what is possible. We have the sediment load coming down the Mississippi and Atchafalaya rivers. There's a lot of possibilities here in creating marsh. That does not mean it'll work everywhere. Atchafalaya Bay was only about five feet deep, and it does not suffer the same level of subsidence as many other sections of Louisiana. So about three feet of land where there had been five feet of water. Right. We've got eight feet of height here. Do the math. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty incredible. And in one spot on the map, with a little help from man, nature builds an accidental paradise.